Equinox part four. E Hello again, and today we're in Chester, and I'm going to pick up my copy of Jean-Michel Jarre's Welcome to the Other Side. Obviously, it was shown uh, on New Year's Eve 2020 into 2021, and then available online, and I used a free trial uh, with iTunes, Apple Music to put it on my phone and use it for running 5 and 10k runs so i know it's good upbeat electronic dance music but it's a year in which jean michel has released an ambient album and obviously a very contrasting electronic dance music album amazonia you can see my review on this i really enjoyed my first listen and i've continued to really enjoy it um I've enjoyed it, particularly waking up in the mornings or so just having got up, get me a cup of, co cup of coffee, my cereal and having that on as I sort of do my first tasks of the day. And it's it's really, really works for me. It does very much put me in mind of Mussorgsky's pictures at an exhibition. Very much composed, obviously, for an exhibition. But you have the different moods drifting through the different feels. Um, obviously, less melody and form driven than Mussorgsky's but it does the job of taking you through a different number of sonic pictures now I see a lot of comments about Jarre's music like why don't we have more oxygen equinox magnetic fields type albums my response to this and my feeling about this is is firstly like the artist is the artist surely they can um, decide what they want to do and how they want to try and develop or not develop their music so if Jean-Michel wants to do these things then, then fair enough um, I may not always like it or may not enjoy them as much yes I love his earlier albums and albums like Revolutions and Chronology are very much go-to enjoyable albums of Zuluk. Um, since the 90s, mid-90s, his music has taken a different direction. Well, Metamorphoses onwards was later, later 90s. And uh, obviously, Teo and Teo. When we're listening to the music of artists that we like, do we want exactly the same thing again and again and again? Or do we want them to try and take some risks, be different, allow them to try different things? And in so doing, grow their own music and skills and uh, ability to communicate a different different types of music and different types of mood. Or do we want more or less the same thing every time? Now, an artist very much in point of doing the same thing again and again, and I mean this in a, a positive sense, um, is Enya. I really love Enya, but almost every single album of Enya's, you know what you're going to get. Well, not almost. <laughs> Each album it is. So, so, obviously, you've got Enya's first album, The Celts. And this is like the first edition of it as well. And it's like, hey, this is a new sound. This is something fresh, original. It's really, really good. Let's take that sound and make, make it more whole, make it more perfect. And so then we've got Enya's album, Watermark, which is absolutely stunning. If you want an album full of moods and vibes and uh, sort of melancholy sort of misplaced longings and all that kind of stuff watermark and it is great then yeah you had shepherd moons um again but very much in the spirit of watermark and the celts but maybe not quite as at the pinnacle of the impact of the celts and watermark and then she continues to make the same album and the same feel many times over. So the memory of trees, uh, Dark Sky Island, and I think I'm missing actually three Enya albums, but I'm very fond of Enya, but you buy one of her albums, you know what you're gonna get. There's no risk, there's no, well, that was different than the last one. Would we want every single artist we really like to do more or less the same thing? Like, do we want an, an Oxygen 33, yeah? Um, so I, I'm, I'm all for Jean-Michel experimenting and trying different things. And I think this year's albums of Amazonia, 
and Welcome to the Other Side are good because they demonstrate, I think, the versatility of Jean-Michel in creating atmospheric ambient soundscapes as well as thumping electronic dance music. What I don't like so much about the EDM stuff from Jean-Michel is it, it is it lacks the subtleties of, say, Equinox and Oxygen, those kind of pastoral, nurturing feelings. But then does every album have to be about the same feelings? No. Uh, what Jean-Michel's Welcome to the Other Side does do is it, it is a great accompany. It is a great accompaniment for exercise and for environments that you want that boo, 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 that, that feeling. What I also hope Welcome to the Other Side will do is obviously when festivals are fully going again after these times we've been in, I hope really hope it will help push people back into Jean Michel's push people back into Jean Michel's earlier back catalogue and it acts as, as a bridge to people to discovering the breadth and versatility of Jean Michel's back catalogue. And that it isn't all ambient. It isn't all thumping dance music. That there is that breadth of sounds in Jean-Michel Jarre's style. Anyway, so I'm going to head down into HMV in Chester now. And hopefully they have a uh, Blu-ray and CD of the music in stock. And I will give a little bit of feedback later on about uh, the tracks. I'll pop it on in the car on the way back. I've got like a 50 odd minute drive back, which... I think should be enough to listen to the concert all the way through and what's on the CD. I haven't looked closely online and uh, life's been a bit busy to take in all, all, all the details. But um, I really, really look forward to getting it and um, experiencing it. I've had Amazonia on again this morning. Yeah, it, it, I, I liked it on the first listen. I loved it on the first listen, but it, it grows more deeply each time I listen and to listen to it uh, in the mornings is just lovely. For me, Jar's most perfect album is Waiting for Cousteau. I really need to do an in-depth piece about this because it, it captures everything I love about Jar. It captures everything I love about Jar's music. Um, yes, Zuluk, Rendezvous, Chronology, uh, Revolutions, others are equally as good but this one just seems to nail it for me so this sort of sits in the middle between the ambience of amazonia and the thumping electronic dance of welcome to the other side anyway i need to go and get it there we and there we have it mission accomplished i've got my copy need to unwrap it and give it a play on the way back and running time is 51 minutes so it should fit hopefully just about perfectly good to be back in chester i was a tour guide here for several years and uh, did help a local company win a tourism award back in 2006 best tourism experience for visit chester and chester so here we are the disc concerned Two discs, a CD audio and a Blu-ray. Excuse <coughs> me. So let's give us a quick open, if it'll let me. Doesn't want me to do that. Let's use the car key. Run it along the side. I haven't got any scissors with me today. Not in the car. There we go. Got an opening. $16.99, a bit pricey than usual, but it has got the Blu-ray. So Jean-Michel Jarre. Live in Notre Dame, welcome to the other side. Nice folding out disc. Inlay booklets. Ooh, I'm not used to filming it like this. Two discs either side. A binaural download, valid until end of December 2025. Nice inlays. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is nice. So I can go for that, as indeed I have and screenshots from the performance on the night i watched it with my parents on new year's eve who are familiar with jar's older stuff it was a bit of a uh, an awakening for them to hear his more contemporary electronic dance music style so i will be listening to the cd on the way back 
comments and I'll give a bit of feedback at the other end. On the other side, you could say. And good morning. Suddenly, it's a few days later and I've not been able to finish the reviewing of Welcome to the Other Side. Put it on in the car on the way back from Chester the other day and uh, it was very, very good. It was much better listening to the music in a car where you can turn it up loud. When I watched the concert on New Year's Eve, it was with my folks in the lounge obviously you can't have it up too loud and there is also the uh, <coughs> unending commentary to uh, handle so you can't really lose yourself in the music to so much of a degree and hearing it in the car was was brilliant um, so i was very pleased with that couple thoughts equinox part four i don't really like it mixed with glory no, uh, I skipped that one. I, I really kind of a grimace hearing that one. Um, I'm not a type of fan that loves everything that an artist does. If I don't like it, I don't like it. And Equinox Part 4 on Welcome to the Other Side is like more, more Jean-Michel Jar instead of Jar. There's none of the subtlety, none of the beauty, none of the feel, and it just feels really forced to me. Um, Stardust, yes, it, I remember feeling at the time it was great seeing Stardust used and hearing Stardust used as the countdown to the new year. Though I hope it doesn't become the go to version where the setup before the drop is omitted from performances and future recordings because I, I like the whole journey of Stardust. It's, it's a great track. It makes me smile. It brings tears to my eyes. It really does. It's a beautiful piece of music. Uh, yeah, musically, it works. If you like thumping dance music done the Jean-Michel Jarre way, it really does work. As for the Blu-ray, um, I'd never played a Blu-ray in my life, but I did buy a Blu-ray player earlier in the year, which got us to take DVDs and CDs, of course. And so I linked up my Blu-ray player to the TV and uh, put it on and the picture is stunning much better than a streamed over the net quality um, really really blown away so as a project I do think that welcome to the other side is a worthy worthwhile one it's the innovation of the, the immersive surrounds and digital interface so, yeah, musically, apart from Equinox 4, it really all works for me. The Blu-ray, the concert, and the music. So, okay, well, if you enjoy my content about Jean-Michel Jarre, please do subscribe. I am aspiring to do more music-related videos, as well as catch up with a huge backlog of ancient sites, visits which I recorded during lockdown walks, from last November through to April. So please subscribe. There will be more content on Jar, ancient sites, other bits and pieces coming in the weeks and months ahead. Take care wherever you are and thank you for watching.